Howdy! In this video presentation I'd like to talk about this 8 inch gator chuck. Now this is brand new and it was presented to me by Carl Ganshirt of Global Tooling Solutions and there's his address in Massachusetts and a phone number and a fax number as well as the website. So take a look at that if you're interested in these chucks and they make these in a wide variety of sizes and this particular one is uh, forged steel and it's 8 inch diameter reversible jaws and that's a three jaw scroll and it's called a tech true adjustable chuck that can be adjusted uh, to bring it back into uh, uh, accuracy if it gets out a little bit and there's the model number and the part number and it came with uh, uh, a little booklet here on uh, the different accessories and repair parts and uh, spare jaws and things like that so Let's get into the heart of the matter here. As I said before, this is an 8 inch chuck and it came with a safety chuck key and the mounting bolts as well as three hex keys uh, used to take it apart or to adjust it. And you can see that when a chuck is purchased they normally do not come with a backing plate on it because uh, they're not sure of what type of lathe you're going to mount it to so you purchase a backing plate that is the same as the spindle on your lathe and in this case they furnished me with an L00 taper key backing plate and it's all ready to go on. This chuck has reversible jaws and of course to reverse them you take out the cap screws and just flip them and I think most of you are used to that feature on uh, uh, lathe chucks and uh, these cap screws here are used to take the chuck apart and I'm not going to tamper with those in any way and we have a little uh, lubricating uh, hole right here and the three uh, socket head cap screws will be used going through those uh, counter board holes and into the backing plate and that's how the backing plate plate is secured. Looking at it from the side now you'll see that there are uh, three square holes that can be used to open and close the, uh, the chuck and the other set screws here, they're hex and there's four of them, they are used to adjust the chuck. And looking into the bore here, you'll see that in fact this chuck is really a, a three jaw within a four jaw and that's what makes it adjustable and uh, Gator calls it uh, a tech true and other companies have uh, different names for that. Look at the nice finish on this chuck. But anyway, uh, looking right here you can see that there are four pins, one, two, three, four, and those are adjusted by these screws here on the outside of the chuck and that's what allows us to adjust the chuck. And in just a minute I'm going to mount this on the lathe and I am going to adjust it with a dial indicator. With the chuck backing plate in position but not secured, you'll notice that there is some play here. and that's part of the adjustment uh, system and looking at, at uh, the diameter here I checked this with the caliper and that's uh, 4.308 inches or thousandths of an inch in diameter but the bore right here is uh, 4.318 so there's about ten thousandths difference between the bore and the portion here that goes in and that is what allows us to adjust the chuck back into zero total indicator run out. For my own purposes I color coded the accessories that came with this chuck and uh, that's a matter of uh, your own opinion but I, I like to do that so I can keep track of things. But this is a 10 millimeter hex key that fits into the uh, adjusting screws. When I do my adjustment I like to use two hex keys and in order to do that I made up two hex keys simply by cutting off an allen wrench, that's what's left of it, or a hex wrench and uh, mounting it into two little handles because I like to work one against the other and you'll see me do that 
when I get it on the lathe here in just a minute. That's just a matter of personal preference, but I believe it speeds up the process and just makes it more pleasurable and uh, faster. Now I'm going to mount the backing plate onto the chuck and the first thing I'm going to do is wipe it clean and make sure that there's absolutely no dirt or debris in any of the mating surfaces and this is a brand new clean white tissue and then perhaps just a little bit of oil on, on the surfaces and I'll rub that in so there's just a little film of oil and now I'm ready to mount this like that but of course the counter bore is on the other side so I have to turn the entire chuck upside down and this chuck weighs about 50 pounds Now I'm not going to tighten these up, I'm just going to snug them up because these have to be in a slightly loose, loose position, uh, position in order to adjust the chuck. But yet we don't want it to fall apart when we're moving it and mounting it on the lathe. This is my closing 12 inch lathe 5900 series. And uh, to repeat myself, it has an L00 taper key spindle. And if you're not familiar with this type of spindle, it, it is a uh, standard uh, throughout the industry, but possibly not as common as the cam lock. I'm not real sure on that. But uh, it prevents the chuck from spinning off if you reverse it. And it's just, it's just a good way to mount a chuck or an accessory onto a lathe spindle. But again, this... Uh, taper must be absolutely clean without any chips inside and out and I've already cleaned uh, the bore of the chuck and just a couple drops of oil if there's too much it's going to spin out and end up again on your shirt sleeve or your shoulder the first thing I did when I got this chuck was to make a saddle so I, I made this wooden saddle out of a 4x4 four four because this 50 pound chuck is just a little bit difficult to handle and I don't want to damage the chuck or the lathe or especially my fingers. I find that it also helps to have a bit of a handle to hold on to. So this is inch and a quarter stock, 4 or 5 inches long. If I just tighten that in the, in the jaws and extend it like that, I got something to, to grasp rather than uh, the chuck jaws themselves and now the entire assembly can be split right, slid right onto the assembly and lifted if necessary for uh, any additional alignment as I engage and then tighten the collar and then the collar will be tightened with the spanner wrench And here's an alternate way of doing it, and probably most machinists do use this method. Again, this is inch and a quarter material, and it's about 18 inches long or so. And uh, that will fit into the spindle, depending on the size of your spindle on your lathe. And that can be just lifted up, slid into the spindle, and then you have full control over the chuck as you line it up with the, with the spindle and tighten the collar. A quick safety note, you may be well advised to unplug the lathe so there is no possibility of you bumping the switch while you're installing the chuck and turning the machine on and having a disaster. Now after the chuck is in position and I still got it in back gears, I'll use the spanner wrench and tap it with a lead hammer to secure, secure the big uh, retaining nut. And finally, I'm ready to adjust the chuck. Now notice that I've set up a magnetic base dial indicator on the carriage with the plunger against the test stock. Now this is one inch diameter drill rod and it's been ground. 
Now, ground stock means that it's truly round rather than just a piece of cold roll steel, and we're not sure just how round it is or how accurate it is. So you're far better off with uh, ground stock, that is drill rod, or a hardened one if you have it. And I believe larger diameter is better than uh, something smaller like this, but this is also ground stock. Do you recall that there are four adjustment screws on the chuck? Now I have, for demonstration purposes, marked them. So I've got this marked orange and the opposite one orange. That's a pair. And then the other pair is white. And that's for my own reference. And I think it'll help you understand what I'm doing if you've never seen this done. Looking at the chuck from this view, you can see that I've got the indicator set up on center as far as the elevation is concerned and I have loosened these three mounting uh, cap screws just slightly. I don't want them to be sloppy but they have to be snug enough so that the chuck can move back and forth within the backing plate. And then using the two homemade uh, 10 millimeter screws, uh, wrenches, I can move it back and forth. First this way until I get a good reading here because it's way off right now and then I'll rotate it and put these into the uh, the white slots and do the same. Now presently I know you can't see the indicator but I am about 25 thousandths off. I'm going to work in the direction of the orange uh, set screws first and uh, rotating it now. I set this on zero. I'm rotating it uh, 180 degrees and I'm 20 thousandths off. Now I need to split the difference. So if I adjust these using the, the two wrenches until I'm on the 10, Now rotating it, you can see that I'm within two thousandths already in that direction. Now I'll do the same thing with the white. And I am off about fifteen thousandths on the white. So I'll split that difference. and I'm within two or three thousandths in that direction. Still working on the white, which is only about three thousandths off. Set that to zero. And I'm only about a half thousandth off. Now I'm going to check it again on the orange. Also, about a half thousandth or one thousandth off, I should say. Now you can't uh, tighten them too tight because uh, it's like working a forejaw. The uh, outer portion of the chuck has to be able to move within that backing plate as I make these adjustments. Now that the chuck has been brought into virtual uh, zero runout, I need to tighten the three mounting bolts. So I'm doing that now. And I need to get those quite tight. And they should not be loosened until the next time that this chuck may need adjustment, which might be six months from now or six years from now. One other thing I wanted to point out on this lathe, and probably many other lathes for that matter, and this is an older lathe, but the, uh, the bearings are probably somewhat worn, but just by uh, wiggling the end of the stock with my fingertips, and I'm not putting that much pressure on it, but you can see that I'm moving it about a half a thousand. So just by grasping the chuck as I spin it to take my readings, I am sometimes getting a little deflection that looks like an inaccuracy in the chuck, but in fact that is the spindle. And then getting down on this end here, 
I'm wiggling the hand wheel at the far left end of the headstock and you can see that I'm getting a little deflection. I'm kicking it up a notch now. This is a test indicator that reads in tenths of a thousandths. Perhaps you can see that on the dial. So remember that a thousandth of an inch is about the thickness of a blonde hair. So a tenth of a thousandth is one tenth the thickness of a hair. So now rotating this spindle, you can see I have a deflection here of perhaps two or three ten thousandths of an inch. That's certainly within the tolerance of this chuck according to the instruction manual. So at this point I'm really splitting hairs and remember that a test indicator by and large is more accurate than a regular dial indicator. So this is really right on and the chuck is all tightened down and ready to use. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and thanks to Global Tooling Solutions with uh, Carl Ganshirt who sponsored this video. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.